Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this video is for the subject of geography for the course of bachelors in arts and bachelors in arts with honors in geography this video is second in the series for the paper of climatology and the topic for the current video is atmosphere its origin composition and its importance the video is being recorded by dr pallavi upreti the course coordinator and presenter for the video is dr pallavi upreti affiliated to department of geography doon university the academic expert and reviewer for the video is professor santosh verma head of the department department of geography sdm pg government degree college doiwala dehradun affiliated to shri dev suman uttarakhand university the video is produced and presented under the project name dth swayam prabha channels of mhrd new delhi india Hello learners I am Dr Pallavi Upreti assistant professor in the department of geography in Dr Nityanand Himalayan Research and Study Center Doon University Dehradun in our introductory module we have discussed various aspects which are related to climatology climatology as an important branch of physical geography the role significance and applicability of climatology in current world scenario Today in this particular module we will be discussing atmosphere various concepts which are related to the origin and evolution of atmosphere and various concepts which are related to the layers of atmosphere and the significance of atmosphere to earth and living organisms so let's begin the main objective which we will be discussing in this particular video will be focusing on first what is atmosphere in general what atmosphere is and the overview of atmosphere the origin of atmosphere how it has evolved over the geological time period since the evolution of the earth and the present composition of the atmosphere the the atmosphere as we know of today and the atmosphere which has made life possible on earth and finally the last topic which we will be covering will be the importance of atmosphere what is atmosphere atmosphere is very much unique to our planet earth it is a thick envelope of gases that surround earth from all the sides and it is attached to earth because of its gravitational pull it is very much part of the earth system and this particular unique feature that is the presence of atmosphere the type of atmosphere the composition of atmosphere which we have today makes the planet habitable and it makes the planet unique from all the other planets in the solar system because it is only earth which is habitable which has life and the composition of atmosphere plays a very significant role in making this life possible on earth so our earth's atmosphere is very well developed and it is very much part of the earth system significant component of the biospheric system why because it's provide all the necessary gases for sustenance not only the sustenance but also the evolution of life in the beginning of the planet and now the sustenance of all the life forms also it filters harmful solar radiations like uv radiations so these two aspects of atmosphere makes uh, the earth unique because it not only provides uh, the basic conditions for the sustenance and for thriving of life on earth it also filters harmful solar radiation which would otherwise have not been possible and earth would have bathed in uh, you can say the harmful solar radiation so the atmosphere in simple words it governs all the physical conditions of weather on planet earth which includes temperature pressure moisture content wind velocity wind direction and climate 
in total. So climate is the aggregation of long term weather patterns and atmospheric behavior we have already discussed in the previous video. So atmosphere is one of the basic component or you can say atmosphere is one large umbrella under which all these climatic factors, weather patterns and atmospheric conditions you can say they aggregate together. Atmosphere, its origin and formation. As you all know that atmosphere as we have today, the current atmosphere which we have today on earth was not there when the earth was initially formed 4.6 billion years ago. When the earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago, it was a hot rotating ball of gases which was called as nebula and it was a mixture of gases, it was a mixture of solids and it has almost no atmosphere because it was rotating in such a speed, it was, it was so hot that there was no atmosphere during the initial years and the atmosphere was formed in the very much later years of the formation of Earth. So what we have initially, what we had initially, we can call it as atmosphere one. The initial atmosphere was very, very thin when Earth was formed. And even after several years, several million years after, it came only into existence after several million years after. So initially, the earth was a very hot mixture of gases and solids and it was rotating in a speed and slowly and gradually a thin primitive atmosphere was formed which was mainly sourced from the primordial nebula and it was dominated by the gases which are today also found in the outer space that is hydrogen and helium. So you can say that the atmosphere, the primitive atmosphere which our earth had was mainly composed of hydrogen and helium and it was so sourced from the contents of nebula, the outer space. So in the hot atmosphere, the molecules of hydrogen and helium, they were moving too quickly, too rapidly because the nebula was spinning at a very, very high speed and escaped the gravitational pull Earth had. They escaped because they were moving very quickly and the hydrogen and helium, the Earth was very quickly stripped off because of the hot flaring solar winds in the primitive Earth. And so the atmosphere one or the primitive atmosphere was lost to outer space after a point of time and earth was again devoid of these gases. Now the atmosphere 2, when we talk about atmosphere 2 which was formed much later during the evolution of earth, so the secondary atmosphere was formed as the planet cooled. So as the planet as this hot rotating ball of nebula started cooling down the formation of crust began. So at that point of time, the planet cooled and it started shrinking. So the secondary atmosphere was very much sourced from the Earth itself. And how it was sourced? It was formed as part of the process which is called as outgassing of the Earth interiors. So the gases which were trapped in the Earth's interior during the initial years of the formation of Earth, they started escaping because the crust was shrinking. So they started escaping and in this particular process several gases were emitting from the interiors of the earth. So you can say that the secondary atmosphere was sourced from the earth's interior through the process of outgassing of the earth's interiors. So beginning of the crust demarcated the formation of secondary atmosphere. However, at this point of time, because of widespread volcanic activity, we added several gases like carbon dioxide. There was predominance of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, ammonia, and water vapor. A lot of water vapor was also formed during this time period. So earth with major volcanic eruptions at this point of time because earth's crust was forming. So when the volcanic eruptions were taking place, several new gases came into existence with predominance of CO2 and water vapor in the atmosphere. So this was the second atmosphere. Now the third atmosphere or the atmosphere which we much more know now or which started giving a shape of atmosphere which we have today is when the secondary atmosphere evolved. 
so now the atmosphere which we have today has evolved from the secondary atmosphere and now it has evolved when gradually the planet cooled further so gradually when the planet began to cool further the solid hard cryotonic structure was formed so at this point of time the atmosphere was dominated by water vapor so the water vapor condensed and fell as the rain because the planet was cooling so the hot water vapor also condensed and fell in the form of rain forming global oceans of today so when these global oceans came into existence a lot of atmospheric co2 because you know global oceans and water has the capacity to store the co2 so atmospheric co2 decreased by dissolving in ocean waters and co2 removal further allowed cooling of atmospheric conditions why because co2 is a greenhouse gas it has the ability to trap heat so as and when the temperature came down the co2 was removed from the atmosphere the atmospheric condition further you know started cooling so a much more lower temperature which we had in the initial years the temperature came down of the whole atmosphere of the earth and gradually the conditions were becoming conducive for the evolution of life forms so much more co2 was absorbed and the co2 levels gradually came down making conditions much more habitable so now also even in this atmosphere 3 case or the segment secondary atmosphere evolved you can still see here this point of time the bigger uh, component the bigger gases in atmosphere the bigger composition of gases in atmosphere like nitrogen it started stabilizing but there was certainly no free oxygen at this point of time so now you can see that the oxygen which we have today the oxygen which has made life possible on earth was formed at a much much later stages in the evolution of atmosphere so after the secondary atmosphere evolved after the oceans came into existence the co2 levels gradually decreased the conditions in oceans became favorable for the growth of organisms mainly the organisms like cyanobacteria so certain types of organisms began thriving in oceans which added oxygen so this reducing temperature and stabilizing atmospheric conditions led to evolution of life which added oxygen to our atmosphere as we know it of today so the present atmosphere the composition of present atmosphere was formed much later through several mechanical physical and chemical and even biological processes around 3.5 billion years ago the free oxygen was slowly added to the atmosphere by the photosynthetic cyanobacteria which are found in our global oceans and they gradually uh, you know emitted oxygen they added the oxygen molecule so evolving life in global oceans the eukaryotic algae accelerated the oxygen production and by 600 million years the oxygen arrived at about 10% 10% of the present concentration the o2 build up the oxygen build up gave a new diversification to the origin of life not only in oceans but also in the global land areas so aerobic respiration fueled the multicellular activity also and multicellular organisms bigger organism began to thrive so now oxygen opened the possibility of land dwelling biota also major forests area started booming on the surface of earth adding further oxygen to the surface of earth and absorbing in the whole process of photosynthesis somewhere taking carbon dioxide and then emitting oxygen so after photosynthesizing organisms multiplied on earth surface which are mainly plants and you know green plants and trees and even in oceans much of the carbon dioxide was replaced with oxygen so you can say that see that the carbon dioxide level is continuously decreasing since the inception of earth to such levels where it became a very major component in terms of composition in atmosphere but it still has a very significant role in maintaining the conditions on the surface of earth which determine life so you can see that continuously slowly slowly the oxygen is increasing and co2 levels are decreasing uh, to the to their present state so presently if you see the oxygen concentration increased to some 
somewhere around 20.9 percent by 250 million years ago and it made the life possible on earth so green plants were thriving we, we were having a full flourish system where life was thriving on earth which was only possible in a very very later stages in the evolution of atmosphere so now with this graph you can uh, see here particularly that the oxygen levels are very low at this point of time we didn't had oxygen in the atmosphere till somewhere around 2 billion years from the formation of the earth so if you consider that the earth was formed somewhere around 4.6 billion ago so for the half time period since the atmosphere was formed we didn't had any free oxygen and it was much more related because of the biological physical and several other processes and gradually the there was a rise in the production in the existence of oxygen and it was later added in the atmosphere so moving on to the next slide so we will just quickly take the whole cycle how the atmosphere was formed so you can see in the first slide that this is a hot rotating nebula and earth was a hot ball of gases with no particular surface no particular structure and it was at this point of time that it was dominated the atmosphere was dominated by hydrogen and helium uh, it was mainly sourced from the outer space and uh, now after a certain point of time in geological history the earth's crust started solidifying and there were major volcanic eruption activities which added water vapor and carbon dioxide ammonia sulfur dioxide several gases to the atmosphere so at this point of time there was a there was a dominance of carbon dioxide and water vapor in the atmosphere so as and when the earth's crust gradually became you know hard it started solidifying and the earth's temperature reduced the immense amount of water vapor which was present in the atmosphere it started condensing and it turned into the global oceans of today so these global oceans of today further decreased the they absorbed the co2 in the atmosphere and the level of co2 also began to reduce making the temperatures of earth much more favorable from the past so major life started thriving on the surface of earth further making the conditions better for the evolution of other species which were dependent on oxygen so gradually the levels of oxygen increased and the co2 decreased so the present composition which we have today is that nearly 78 percent of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen as a stable major gas in the atmosphere and then we have oxygen somewhere around 21 percent in the atmosphere and co2 which was a major component of the atmosphere somewhere in the past has now reduced to even less than 0.1 percent in the atmosphere looking at the present composition of atmosphere we can say that the earth's primordial atmosphere started 4 billion years ago and has been subjected to continuous changes since then the earth's atmosphere stretches from the surface of the planet to as far as 10,000 kilometers so as and when the earth's atmosphere gradually started forming it was retained it was intacted in its place by the gravitational pull of earth and gradually this particular atmosphere merges with the outer space but the effective height of the atmosphere which is relevant to the major conditions on the surface of earth still remains between 16 to 29 kilometers and even in the 16 to 29 thousand kilometers only up to thousand kilometers is considered significant with 90 percent confining to the height of only 29 kilometers so we have a major stretch of atmosphere to 10,000 kilometers but what is most relevant to all the life processes and all the weather patterns phenomena activities life processes and activities on the surface of earth is it just stretches uh, to about somewhere thousand kilometers and 90 percent of it is confined to the height of just 29 kilometers so looking at the present composition of the earth surface you can say that it can be mainly divided into gases second one is water vapor and third one is particulate matter so mainly the composition of the atmosphere is composed of these three main variables so number one the gases when we talk about the gases we know today that the earth's atmosphere is made up of 78 percent of nitrogen 21 percent of oxygen 
0.93 that is less than 1% of argon and remaining 0.1% are other gases which includes carbon dioxide, methane, ozone. So the nitrogen and oxygen are the main components of atmosphere by volume constating approximately to 99% of the dry atmosphere. So when you look at this particular pie chart here, you can see that a very large chunk, very large portion of the atmospheric composition is being taken by nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen here is a very, very important gas, although the significance of nitrogen is very variable in atmosphere. So it makes up to 78% of the air we breathe and it was trapped. We have already talked about this. It was trapped and stabilized during the earth formation. So uh, while in these several billion years, the earth's atmosphere stabilized, the nitrogen molecules also stabilized, forming up to somewhere around 78% of the atmosphere. So it is used by living forms only after it is removed from the atmosphere and deposited or fixed into more reactive compounds on the earth's surface by specialized nitrogen fixation bacteria. Okay, so which are found on the roots of leguminous plants, nitrogen fixation bacteria help the nitrogen to convert into much more usable, readily usable compounds. Otherwise, it remains non-usable or non-reactive. Second very important gas is oxygen as we all know about it constitute to about 21% of the earth's atmosphere and it is very very important for the survival of life forms as we have discussed that till 2.5 billion years ago we did not have a composition of atmosphere which had oxygen and life could thrive so only after the presence or only after the evolution of oxygen life is the way it is today on earth and oxygen not only supports life form it also produces a very very important gas in the layers of atmosphere in the upper layers of atmosphere mainly stratosphere we will be discussing about the layers of atmosphere in the coming slides so this particular ozone which is found in the atmosphere blocks most of the harmful uv radiations from the sun so it is it was only possible when the molecules of oxygen were formed in the atmosphere so 21% of it is oxygen. So 21% plus 78%, nearly 99% it's dominated by oxygen and nitrogen. Another important gas is argon. Although it is inert gas, 1% of the concentration in the atmosphere is of argon, which is the third most abundant gas, but it exists as a noble gas. It is a non-reactive gas. Levels have gradually increased since the earth was formed because radioactive potassium 40 turned into argon as it decays. So over several billion years ago, as potassium 40 decayed, it produced argon. So the levels of argon are less than 1%, third most abundant gas in the atmosphere. Other trace gases accounts for new remaining 0.3%, which include gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. So carbon dioxide is the fourth most abundant gas component of the dry air, accounting for about 0.3%. 4% in the atmosphere and it is important but the relevance although it is just 0.04% in the atmosphere but it is a very very important greenhouse gas as we have seen through the evolution of the earth that when the levels of carbon dioxide were very high in the atmosphere the temperatures were soaring on the planet and life was not possible although it's, it's just 0.04% in the atmosphere it is an important greenhouse gas that is very important because it has the ability to to trap heat so it affects the temperature conditions on the surface of earth besides gases water vapor is also a significant component of atmosphere the water vapor content in the atmosphere ranges between 0 to 5 percent by volume depending upon several factors that like altitude and latitude it decreases from equator towards the poles and as we go up in the atmosphere. So we have nearly 90% of the total atmospheric vapor concentrated within the height of 5 kilometers above the surface of earth. So it is mainly concentrated in the lower layers of the atmosphere. It is responsible for various weather phenomena and various weather patterns which are found on the surface of earth like condensation, precipitation, fog, clouds, rainfalls, frost, snowfalls, etc. 
and it also plays a very very significant role in trapping of heat besides carbon dioxide it is also dominant greenhouse gas because the molecules of water vapor has the ability to trap heat so it is a dominant greenhouse gas in our atmosphere and it plays a very significant role in heating and cooling of the earth surface so water vapor uh, although it is 0 to 5% in the in the composition of atmosphere the percentage is quite low but it has a very dominant role in in defining the weather patterns phenomena throughout the world and also it is a dominant greenhouse gas so it traps the molecules of heat energy and has the ability to release and and, and cool them over the time period also so water vapor role is significant beside gases in the atmosphere another very important uh, aspect in the composition of atmosphere is particulate matter so particulate matter are the solid particles present in the atmosphere which in includes dust particles, salt particles, pollens, smoke, soots, volcanic ashes, etc. So most of the particulate matter is present in suspension in atmosphere. It is, is, it is loosely hanging in the atmosphere and help in the scattering of solar radiation creating different colors in the sky. So the colors, the diffusion of light, the red illusion of light which you see when there is dawn, that particular event is created by the scattering of light through particulate matter which are present in the atmosphere. So it also helps in the formation of water droplet influencing condensation and precipitation. So these small tiny particles in the atmosphere help the water vapors to condense around uh, them forming a hygroscopic nuclei which we call in geography and it influences the condensation and precipitation of any particular region. So when you see the composition of earth you can say that the earth atmosphere is dominated by the gases like nitrogen, oxygen then we have nearly 5% of water vapor and variable amount of particular matter in the atmosphere depending upon the place and location, the height, the latitude, longitude on the surface of earth so the composition of atmosphere when you talk uh, specifically about the composition of atmosphere besides having so many different variables which are there in the atmosphere besides having so many gases together in the atmosphere and having variable gases in the atmosphere the atmosphere still acts as a single unified gas okay so till a particular level in the atmosphere the atmosphere even after having such a varied composition still acts as a single unified gas it is not there you've never heard that usa has a higher composition of nitrogen or India has a higher uh, composition of oxygen. Why? Because to a certain level in the atmosphere till about 80 kilometers, it exists as a single unified gas. There is no density stratification. That is, there is no stratification of gases in atmosphere depending upon their density. It only starts beyond 80 kilometers. So this density stratification of gases in the atmosphere only becomes prominent after 80 kilometers, wherein the lower most part of the earth's surface or lower most part of the layers after 80 kilometers, we have a dominant nitrogen molecule between 90 to 200 kilometers. Then we have atomic oxygen, which is above nitrogen between 200 to 1000 kilometers. And then as we go move toward the outer space, we have helium to about 3500 kilometers. And gradually when earth's uh, atmosphere merges with the outer atmosphere, the composition much more becomes like uh, the outer space. So we have a dominant hydrogen and helium layer in the outer margins of the atmosphere. So this particular density stratification, although nitrogen and oxygen dominates 99% of the atmosphere, but till 80 kilometers, we don't see this density stratification. It only becomes prominent after 80 kilometers where these layered form arrangement can be seen of the gases moving towards the outer margins of the surface of Earth. This was the composition of the atmosphere. So this unique composition of the atmosphere makes atmosphere very, very important. 
the atmosphere is made up of gases like oxygen carbon dioxide that are essential for one of the very important activity called photosynthesis and other life balancing activity so the balance a very unique very subtle balance between the oxygen and co2 which our atmosphere has achieved over the billion years is very essential to support life on earth to make possible conditions which can support life on earth not only today but even in future so when we talk about this balance we have to understand this that co2 levels which we have today have made the life possible on earth and we have to maintain these levels so whenever we talk about global warming whenever we talk that the co2 concentration is increasing in our atmosphere we are really worried about the content of co2 why because it is an important greenhouse gas it has the ability to trap the heat on the surface of earth so if the concentration increases over a period of time the the temperature the best conducive temperature which we have today which helps balance life on earth might not be possible over the period of time and many species which are very sensitive to these temperature fluctuations can go extinct so the balance between the two is very significant and our atmosphere today has this particular balance and the atmosphere not only governs the physical conditions of weather and climate but these physical conditions in turn also balances the biological activity of plants animals and the living creatures on earth so these physical conditions like temperature pressure moisture wind velocity wind directions create unique conditions in different different parts of the world so the physical conditions although might look stable for the whole earth but in totality the atmosphere governs the physical conditions of a local place to regional place to the whole world in totality density and pressure variations causes air causes winds causes planetary winds local winds which influence several weather patterns rainfall temperatures of different places on earth so its composition of variable components notably water vapor ozone carbon dioxide and dust particles have the ability to trap and release heat hence majorly affect weather phenomena and atmospheric patterns throughout the world so this unique composition of the earth has only made this possible nitrogen and oxygen although makes up 99.9% of the gaseous composition but have lesser role in affecting the atmospheric condition but on the other hand they are important for life supporting processes like uh, respiration like development of plant other life processing activities it is an important reservoir for water in the form of water vapor and the source of precipitation so the whole water cycle condensation evaporation precipitation is dominated is governed by the composition of atmosphere which we have today the most important one is the, it protects the earth from harmful ultraviolet solar radiation so our earth in the previous eras in the previous geological time period have had episodes of ultraviolet uh, solar radiations striking on earth earth has bathed in ultraviolet solar radiation in the past but now the composition of atmosphere is so unique so fine that it filters out those harmful ultraviolet radiations and it warms our planet and keeps the temperature habitable for living creatures on earth so this is very important earth is a unique planet and atmosphere because of its unique composition atmosphere as what we have today has reached a unique balance they have such a fine balance over the period of time that we can say that our planet is the only planet in the whole solar system or maybe universe that support life today which is possible because of atmosphere so atmosphere has a multiple diversified role ranging from governing the physical activities a weather patterns atmospheric conditions of the surface of earth ranging from supporting these physical activities to even impacting the biological life forms their growth their development their stature their conditions and even their physical conditions over the period of time so coming to the summary of this particular video the composition of earth's atmosphere has changed over geological time the atmosphere which we have today was not as same which we had in the geological past so over these several million years the atmospheric composition 
has changed and altered. The Earth's atmosphere is unique in the solar system because it contains substantial amount of oxygen which supports life on Earth. The most primitive atmosphere was comprised mainly of helium and hydrogen which was sourced from the space, which was sourced from the primordial matter which was found in space, outer space. The Earth's atmosphere contained mostly CO2 and carbon monoxide and water vapor in the past. The atmosphere which was then modified by early biophysical processes on earth, very complex biological, chemical, physical processes on earth, giving the component, giving a composition of oxygen which was not initially present in the atmosphere. So the present composition is dominated by nitrogen oxygen which makes up to 99% volume of the dry air in atmosphere and this particular composition made life possible on earth it produced it presented those conditions which thrived life on the global oceans and then gradually it transferred to land together earth atmospheric system create conditions for sustenance of life on earth so the atmospheric composition of today can be considered best for the survival and sustenance of life forms on earth so in this particular video we have discussed about the composition of atmosphere about the origin of atmosphere and importance of atmosphere for the sustenance of life on earth so in the coming videos we will be discussing about the layers of atmosphere thank you for your time thank you for hearing me out thank you